Hello and welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 3 for another Halloween special. The last one we did was three years ago playing as Straker, the zombie specialist. This time around we're playing as Galthran, the skeleton specialist. Very Halloween appropriate and also very fun because he is absolutely brilliant at abusing the necromancy skill. We're up against seven opponents, all of which are going to be playing as the Goody Two Shoes Castle Faction and they're all aligned on the same team. As always, I do recommend checking out the playlist link in the description. Always useful because this is going to be a multi-part series and that way you can watch the whole thing in one go instead of just trying to find the individual parts. Anyway, this start, uh, we have no money at the start but we can start looking for some. So there's some there, some there. We're just going to pick up as much as possible, try and make up for the fact that we're starting with no resources. A bit of ore wouldn't be so bad. Not really high priority, but we will go for some. We've got 1300 gold, that's not enough to do anything with just yet, so let's just end the turn. Let's pick up the ore pit and pick up another bit of ore. After this, ore is fairly low priority, we've got 25 in the bank, that should be more than enough, so let's just keep looking for gold for now. Got a fairly open map. Horde of Troglodytes, that's going to be useful to convert into skeletons, but it's looking like a bit of a dead end for now, which is not ideal. Uh, there's a spell scroll there, slightly tempting, but I think we'll skip it. We will check the Medusa stores just to see what we're up against if we want to go back there later. Lots of Medusas and a pack of Medusa Queens. Probably won't be taking that on for quite some time. Um, no more gold, unfortunately, available here, so we'll end the turn again. Now we only need another 200 gold, and we can buy ourselves a second hero. Right, Seer wants the Badge of Courage, we're unlikely to see that. A Horde of Imps, another potentially good choice to convert into skeletons, but again, seems to be a distinct lack of gold to pick up here. We'll keep exploring though. Another Seer's Hurt, Pendant of Free Will. Plus we found the Sawmill, which is going to be useful. And we can't do anything else, so let's just end the turn. And we should now be over the 2,500 gold mark, which means we can buy ourselves a second hero. We've got Aislin, another necromancer. Let's leave most of the skeletons behind so that Galthran can pick them up on his way through. I also see that we've got Shakti, which is awesome because Shakti comes with, in this case, 69 troglodytes, which can all be converted into skeletons. That's pretty awesome. Let's just see what we can find. Nothing too useful so far. It's looking like a dead end too, blocked off by lots of harpies. So that was not the wisest of purchases in hindsight. I don't think there's any... Yeah, I don't think there's anywhere else we can actually go here. Pretty much blocked off in all directions. Pack of Orcs to the north. Uh, the Troglodytes can probably be beaten, but we'll have to come back and pick up a few more skeletons, I think. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a great deal in the way of income for a little while. We'll just have to pick up the sawmill and head back, pick up some skeletons as soon as possible. Horde of pikemen. Pikemen are pretty tough, so I'm I'm not massively keen on fighting those. Horde of imps might be a slightly better choice, but we don't know what's behind them. I think for now it might just be worthwhile to push up against the imps so we can at least see what's on the other side. Looks like a portal there, which is interesting. Grassland suggests it leads to potentially one of the castle factions, so we want to avoid that for now. We don't want to be encountering them until as late as possible, because we want to build up our hero as much as possible in the meantime. Now, aislin has got a choice. Either we can go and see what's in the Witch Hut, which will teach us uh, a new skill, or we can pick up some units and deliver them to Galthran. I'm not sure we have enough movement points for both, so I'm leaning towards just playing it safe and delivering the units. We'll take the Walking Dead just as fodder, not expecting to use them for much. We'll pass all the skeletons along to Galthran. Now Galthran should be ready to take on his first opponent. We are just going to go for the imps. In fact, it might actually be better to split the zombies instead, because we're not really planning to keep them either way. Let's see what we're up against. 
Not seeing anything too promising there. Six skeletons as a loss is not bad by any means, but let's see if we can do any better. We're on our native terrain, but unfortunately it's not quite enough to give us the speed we need to go before the imps. So we're going to move all the walking dead up and try and block the zombies off. Uh, not the zombies, the skeletons off. We've got the shield spell if we need it. We're just going to wait and we're going to see what they do. I think we did actually go first there, which is interesting. Uh, six speed. Oh yeah, we are faster. I must have... Uh, I wasn't really thinking about that. Okay, fair enough. I did wait at first. Right, defend, defend, defend. What we want to happen is we want one of our meat shield zombies to go down. And then we should have the initiative after that to go and finish off some of these imps. should be able to take them out in one shot, each stack. So no need to draw out the retaliation, we can just finish them off. Ah, that one actually survived, but it's not going to do any damage, and we do manage to get through the fight without losing any skeletons, which is, frankly, probably worthwhile. And now we can explore a little bit further, where we probably encounter lots of gogs, which is going to stop us from going any further. We're not ready to take gogs on yet, we'll need something stronger than this. That did go fairly well though, so potentially a horde of pikemen might be doable. Uh, a horde of troglodytes is more realistic. It's going to take a little while to travel there. But going along the path should make it fairly doable. Let's go ahead and do that. End the turn. And we'll at least pick up the mercury. It is actually pretty useful to have an alchemist lab there because, as Necropolis, you do need a constant supply of mercury in order to buy your bone dragons, which are your level 7 unit. And let's split these skeletons and take on the trogs. Again, that looks fairly positive, but let's see if we can do slightly better. So in this case, the Infernal Troglodytes are the same speed, or... Yeah, the same speed as our Skeletons. So they will go before one of our stacks, but not the other. We're just going to move everyone up, and we're going to try and form a nice meat shield. This last zombie... I might sacrifice him, I'm not too sure. We'll try and move him up for now. We're going to wait with our skeletons again, block them all off. And we should be pretty safe now. Just need to wait. Should be able to finish off that stack of trogs pretty quickly. And hopefully the infernal trogs will soon arrive. So we can kill those off, that's good. Oh, we didn't quite manage to kill them off, but that's fine. We'll wait. Bend. And they're all starting to gather around now. I think it's fine to leave the trogs alive for now. They're gonna not quite manage to get a kill, so that's perfect. Let's finish off all the dangerous stacks. Then finish off the trogs. Three losses and we get four skeletons back. That's pretty much the plan, is just get as many skeletons as possible. As we level up we'll get to advanced necromancy and then expert necromancy. We can also get the necromancy amplifier once we've got a bit more income and that's gonna increase our skeleton growth even faster. The plan is just to exploit it as much as possible pretty much. We also start off with the armor skill, that's a really nice thing about Galthran is Two good skills to start off usually gives you a lot of choice in terms of what secondary skill you end up with. Now I am pretty curious to see what's in the Witch Hut, but it's a bit out of our way and potentially we do want to just gather up resources for now. 
so we'll prioritize that instead. Gathran will pick up this gold. Not exactly a game changer. Mystical Garden, 500 more gold, and now we've got enough to potentially afford Shakti. That's one option, but it's not looking too open-ended yet, so I think we're going to play it safe and just get the Town Hall for now. That's going to increase our income to 1,000 per turn. And we'll end the turn. No sign of anything yet, but we have already spotted two portals, so it's looking like a fairly open-ended map. One kind of constant issue with extra large maps and larger is you do have to try and remember where all the different portals go, which is something I always find extremely hard to keep track of, but we'll do our best. Lots of ore, stone skin, that's not too much more useful than shield would be, so I'm not in any rush to give that to Galthran. Uh, lots of imps. Guarding a speculum though, and the speculum is not massively helpful to be honest. Let's see what else we can see first. Three chests there, that's perfect. Actually, lots of gold. So we can now get Shakti. And what we're also going to do is we're going to... It is very tempting to buy the estate for vampires. But we're not going to rush into that. We're going to get the Skeleton Transformer. And we're going to take all of the trogs. Kill them. Turn them into skeletons. And we're going to try and bring them all the way over to Galthran. First, let's see what's actually in here. Basic artillery, that's not worth going for with Galthran, so we'll avoid that. And with Galthran. A horde of goblins is tempting. We do need gems. We need gems to upgrade the estate, which is going to be important to get vampire lords. Another fairly busted unit. I mean, the skeletons themselves aren't busted, but the numbers of them you can rack up are pretty busted. It's tempting to go for that. For now, let's just explore, see if there's anything else more useful to go for initially. I think it is going to be worthwhile just to take those out, just to train up a bit. It's not going to make a massive difference. With our necromancy skill being as low as it is, there is an argument for trying to save some of these lower level fights so that we can gather up more skeletons later on. But I think it's unlikely to make a difference, so we won't worry too much about that. Doesn't seem to be any sign of anyone yet, which is good. We started a new week. Not made too much progress, but we did start with no resources, so I think that's fair enough. Uh, the estate is also very tempting, and we've got two great choices of heroes here, actually. So plus one gems, not too relevant to Necropolis. But still, a pretty useful hero to have. We can always convert those 15 goblins into skeletons easily enough. Clavius is awesome. Plus 350 gold per turn, that's going to really rack up over the course of the game, so we definitely want to prioritize getting him as soon as possible. He's going to pay for himself in about eight turns, so that's ideal. Now, we can explore by going up in that direction. If anyone should do that, it should be Aislinn, because Aislinn doesn't have too much that's going to be helpful. I don't think I moved Shakti all the way last turn, did I? I'm sure he could have gone further than that, that doesn't seem right. Anyway. That doesn't reveal very much, and I'm not going to go out of my way for that. We can revisit the Mystical Garden now that it's a new week, and we've got ourselves five gems. I don't think we're going to be struggling for gems in this game. Now, do we want to pick up the skeletons before we take the fight? I think we do. In fact, we can use it as an excuse to clear out the imps. Let's split these guys into four stacks. Okay, this time they formed up into three stacks, but that's fine. We can still kill them all in one turn. It's going to be harder to form a meat shield, though. But we are faster, so it should be pretty safe.
mistimed that one, but that's fine. Two skeletons down. Don't think we'll miss them in the long term. Some more there. That's fine. I misjudged that one. Oh well, five loss, three back. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, let's pick up the speculum. Increases our scouting radius. It's not going to be useless. It's the best time to pick one up, so that's fine. Let's split these guys a bit more evenly, and let's take on the goblins. Being a little bit more careful this time. 67 goblins. 5 speed, same speed as us. Need to be a little bit careful here. We're going to let them get a bit closer. And we should be able to bait them just to hit the one stacks. So the rest of our skeletons should be pretty safe. We're just going to leave those there and let them hit them as bait. Oh, that's really bad. So they got morale, so they got to move twice. And uh, they killed many skeletons, which is very sad. I'm not sure I want to hit them with 30 skeletons. I'm not sure that's going to get a kill. I think it should just about kill them. If nothing else, it'll weaken them, and they won't do too much damage back. Yeah, they didn't get a kill there, so that's fine. Okay. The morale was painful, but we got advanced necromancy now, so we'll be getting many more skeletons. We still get four back. That's not too bad. Let's keep exploring. And uh, we've got 2,000 in the bank. We can now get the Mage Guild to start growing our income more. I do want to get Clavius as soon as possible, though. It's kind of tough to choose. For now, let's play it safe. Let's get the Marketplace, because we should be able to buy Clavius next turn, even if nothing goes right in the next turn, which... We've got a Water Wheel there, and we've got some gold, so that's going to be a lot of income pretty quickly. Then the turn. Oh wow, we've seen someone already. That happened much sooner than expected. Uh, they've gone back. Whoever they were, they've uh, they've seen the pixies, or possibly they've seen us, and uh, they've turned back immediately. I'm not sure what to make of that. Who actually was that? The tan player. Okay, that's concerning. Didn't expect to see anyone just yet. Hoping we'd have a bit more time to build up. Magic arrow. This is potentially quite useful. Uh, lots of normal orders. War machine factory. Most good war machines are very expensive. We want to get the ammo cart at some point, but I think we get that anyway, playing as Necropolis. No, we get first aid tents. Okay. Ammo cart is tempting. But not really a priority right now. I think we're going to skip that for now. And... We'll take on lots of trogs. Or do we want to just make a push? Straight for the tan player. I think there's a good argument for making that push straight away. I'm going to go down to two stacks just so that we can use uh, a slightly better meat shield. It's the wrong button there. Down to two stacks. Split the rest up, and hopefully we'll take this fight easily enough. 17 skeletons, let's see if we can do a bit better. They've actually formed up into one big stack, which is interesting. We should be able to form a decent meat shield though. Hmm, possibly not, possibly this top stack could be vulnerable. Let's see if we can bait them. No, it didn't work. Okay. Fine. That wasn't ideal, but it, whatever, it's fine. 
Uh, we can just go straight in and claim our first town, so <laughs> that is absolutely perfect. Not got the city hall yet, but that was much easier than expected. They should not have left the town like that. That was extremely complacent of them. We can see them here. They've got Zarfax and they've got Adelaide. Adelaide's got a few decent units on her. We're going to want to form up. We should be able to win the fight easily enough if we get the Citadel. It's going to give us some good defense. Uh, what's she got in the way of ranged units? She's got a few archers and a few monks. I think we're going to end up buying the Citadel either way, so let's just get it now. Play it safe. And in this town... We definitely need to get the blacksmith at some point so that we can upgrade the town hall to the city hall. So let's get the blacksmith because that's a prerequisite building. We need it. Um, I'm going to try and keep Aislinn away from here for now. Because she could get sneak attacked. And I'm hoping they will just fall for the bait and attack Galthran. They don't know about my town, and now that they have no town, their priority is going to be to get their town back by any means necessary. So I think, I'm not totally confident, but I think they're going to go for a desperate attack on their old town. We can hopefully finish them off nice and cheesily. First let's get some more gold, keep picking up things around here. in the turn. Ah, bad news, <laughs> they are indeed going to go for the... Okay, they do go for the attack on us. Can we win this fight losing only 12 skeletons? Or less? I think realistically we're always going to lose about that number, so I'm not going to bother fighting that one. Expert Necromancy is going to be nice, let's get that. Now Tan must be desperate. But what's he got left? But this hero annoyingly has picked up some of our wood, but I don't think we're going to struggle too much for wood in this game, so that's not too bad. Let's get Clavius at this base. He's going to pay for himself, so that's fine. And we've got 500 left in the bank. So with Galthran I can go and chase this guy down and finish him off, which is probably well, he's not really a threat, but let's just get him out of the way. Because we've not seen anyone else just yet. So let's just clear this guy out. Gets us some wood as well. Let's see if we can do it with fewer than that. Got no spell points, so it should be doable. We're on their native terrain, so they're going to be slightly faster. But if we can form a decent meat shield, we should be okay. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Or whatever. You can't really do much about morale, it's just one of those things. <sighs> Misclick there. Not good. That is actually really not good. Probably gonna have to haste them now. Bit of a waste of spell points, but we should get them back. Yeah, we get to go first, that's fine. Take a couple of them out, they will get a few kills. But not too many. So we lose nine. Water magic is tempting. Because if we get the prayer spell, that's just a, an extremely good spell in pretty much always. Plus I think, ironically, the Necropolis Town does benefit quite a lot from Expert Bless. It's tempting, but... It's not really a priority, and we've already taken out one of the seven opponents, which is great. Everything went more smoothly than expected. 
Now we've potentially got the option of building up a second town properly, because it's pretty early on. It's only the start of week two. We could take a hero like Saurug and make them into a proper hero. Alternatively, Aislinn might be a decent option because if you can get yourself some angels as the castle town, that's going to increase the morale of all your units. And the main problem with the necromancy skill is that skeletons lower the morale of all your units because they are undead. So those two things can cancel each other out and you can actually have a fairly decent backup hero playing as a kind of castle hero, but still taking advantage of necromancy. That's very tempting. I think Aislinn is the best option for that. Of everything we can see. Clavius is mostly just going to stay put and make us money over the time. Shakti is pretty much completely a scout, so let's leave him to keep exploring. And let's start moving Aislinn over to the castle town. And then we should be able to leave Galthran mostly where he is. It's interesting that this town just has the one path, which... Possibly this is neutral territory, which would explain why we've not seen anyone yet. But it's interesting that I've got so many branches coming out of my path. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the monolith two-way there is going to lead to another one of our opponents, so we need to keep a close eye on that. Pick up the wood. Uh, Clavius. Is it worth picking up artillery with Clavius? It can be an okay skill to have because it lets you control your arrow towers, which is useful for a defensive hero like Clavius. I think we might as well. He's not going to do anything else this turn. So let's pick that one up and... Need to get ourselves a, a mage guild, but it's not a massive priority. I think we're good to keep waiting for now. See if we can get anything here. Upgraded Archer's Tower is tempting because marksmen are very good. I'm definitely tempted by that. I think I think we might as well go for it. We can get nine of them, and that's decent. Well then turn. No sign of anyone else just yet, so perhaps encountering an opponent nice and early was actually a very good thing. Uh, I don't want to take on the orcs. I'm not quite sure where to send Galthron yet. Let's just keep exploring. And hopefully get a better idea of where to go. A hovel? <laughs> That's awesome. So we can take all those peasants and we can convert them into skeletons pretty easily. These are also a decent choice for uh, necromancy. Could definitely convert most of those. But yeah, now that we've got some peasants, ideally we were gonna want to get uh, to get back to the necromancer town and turn those into skeletons. But first, let's explore a little bit more and see what's on offer. First level spell here, magic arrow. Nothing to get too excited about. Looks like we managed to spook them just before they got to this chest. That's pretty good. Slow spell there is actually something. I'm very tempted to go out of my way to pick up. It's a very good spell to have. I need the Mage's Guild at some point, definitely, so let's see if we get slow naturally, which we do, so not a priority. Also got Haste here, so two really good spells there. Galthran to pick up whenever he does go home. Now which things to prioritise out of all, out of all these options, I'm not quite sure. I think the Horde of Pikemen is going to be a fairly easy target at this point. Not sure it's massively worth going out of our way for though, uh, lots of rogues. It's definitely going to be a good backup target, but once we've cleared those two out, there's not too much to be gained from that. Uh, we could probably take out a pack of orcs easily enough. I do want to pick up these marksmen and the monks as well, and I want to transfer them over to Galthran. Just so he's actually got some decent ranged units. Pretty much no downside to that. 
Is there anything in this area that we can explore and do anything with? There is a prison there. That's kind of tempting, but it's blocked behind some evil eyes, which is pretty much guaranteed heavy losses, or at least guaranteed losses. So not going to go out of our way for that one. On the other hand, there is a crypt there and another crypt there. And that is the Pendant of Free Will, which is being looked for by Kendrick. Interesting name for a seer. Um, let's maybe do that. Yeah, I think we're going to start heading in that direction with Galthran. It's got to be higher priority than the other options. And we're going to go in the castle town. We're going to recover our spell points, unless we didn't use any. We did. So yeah, let's get our spell points back. Let's stay here for the turn. And we can even upgrade our mage guild if we want to, but I don't think that's a priority. Grading the monastery is very tempting. It's relatively cheap. We do need crystals to get vampire lords. But... Having three zealots is going to be pretty nice. So let's... Let's just go for it. Clavius, he is free, but I don't really think there's much to do with him. So we'll even be for now. Okay, still no sign of any of the opponents. Let's see what's going on with this. I thought that revealed what the guards are, and I'm a bit confused by that one. And I don't want to risk Aislinn for that. Okay, I'm not sure how that works in that case. A lot of serpent flies is not a great fight to be taking. Hopefully with the help of a couple of ranged units. It might be okay. Let's give it a go. It's going to be good experience if nothing else. Uh, those losses are not too bad, but I want to see if we can save the marksmen. They can't quite get across in one turn. Probably more useful to protect the Zealots, all things considered. On the other hand... Yeah, they pretty much can all reach the Zealots. Try and block as much as we can. But I don't think we're going to be able to save the Marksman, it's not looking likely. Try and bait them with the skeleton and at least partly block off the marksman. So they're actually going for the skeletons, which is interesting and a, a big waste of their time. Okay, that wasn't so bad in the end. Kill those off, that's fine. We're going to defend with the marksman, hopefully keep them alive, although it looks like it's just that one stack left, so. Oh no, it's not, there's that other stack too, of course. It kind of blends in because it's green. Unfortunately, I think we kind of have to take a hit from that. Can't reach it. Don't have enough spell points to use haste, and I think it was worth using magic arrow before. Let's just weaken them a bit so that we should at least survive. And we're going to wait with the skeleton. I'm not sure if opting not to defend stops our defense skill going up, therefore making the skeletons a more tempting target. But that's what we're going to try. We're not going to defend, we're just going to step. As though they actually go for the main stack of skeletons, which is fair enough, not really going to do much damage. Just lost the one marksman there and we should get pretty much all the skeletons back, so that's fine. Pick up the pendant of free will and start heading that back. And then Shakti. There's still a little bit more exploring we can do, so let's go have a look. As though we're blocked off between some boars and some monks. 
So in that case, I think we're good to start heading back to the town. Convert these things into skeletons. Must pick up slow. 100% want that. We've only got 880 in the bank, so I don't think there's too much else we can do here. Pretty much it for the turn. I don't want to be trading resources. We have, however, got 62 ore, which is most definitely more than we need. Let's get rid of that. Now we've got 2,000 in the bank, we should be able to do a little bit more. It's day 5. So it's very tempting to get the Citadel. Also very tempting is to get the Necromancy Amplifier, which is going to help Galthran build momentum. Unfortunately, I have forgotten the mechanics of how the crypt works. Most creature banks, you just need to visit them and they'll tell you what's on guard. So if that didn't happen with the crypt, either the crypt is different or possibly it's already been cleared out. I'm not quite sure about that one, but I'm not going to risk it just yet. I don't really want to lose Aislin. I definitely don't want to risk Galthran, although Galthran should be able to handle pretty much anything there. Thinking about it, Galthran... He's surely got enough. I mean, he might lose some units. But it's got to be doable. Unfortunately, I can't fully remember how the units arrange themselves. I remember how my units arrange themselves, but if we're up against vampires or something like that, um, I can't remember exactly where those appear. Uh, let's at least split these guys in half. I feel like slot 3 is going to be one of the safer options for the marksman. I could be horribly wrong, but I'll do some research after this part anyway, and let's, uh, let's have a go. Okay, we do have to fight, and uh, it's a very strong one, actually. The losses aren't too bad. We lose the marksman, but they were never going to be a permanent fixture in our army. Even so, let's see if we can do it without losing those. As yeah, we've chosen the worst possible spot for uh, the Zealots and the Marksmen in hindsight. Um, let's see, the speed situation is we are faster, so we can walk away. I think we will walk away. Skeletons are going to take some hits. No way around around that one, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to use haste, but we've got no spell points left, which is fair enough, I guess. I'm not going to get too close to those because we're not going to be able to kill them in one shot. And sadly, we are in range of the vampires. Let's move to here for now. Now the skeletons are going to take some nasty hits. That's unfortunate, but there's not a lot we can do about that. Let's use this skeleton to absorb the retaliation of the vampires, and now the whites are going to get a nasty hit off too. I think it's worth it though. And these things, we can pretty much walk away from them. I'm going to leave the Walking Dead there just because they'll waste a turn of the skeletons. The skeletons will try and kill them and that'll be fine. And with this skeleton, I'm not, I'm not totally sure about this one. We could waste a turn of the Walking Dead, but they're slow enough that we can just walk away from them anyway. So I think again we're just going to try and waste the skeleton's turn with that one. Uh, skeletons can reach us, so we're probably going to have to move again. I'm not sure there's anywhere that's actually safe. It's like, either we're in range of the skeletons or we're in range of the vampires. I think in this situation... The vampires aren't going to do too much damage, so let's just get out of range of the whites. The marksmen are kind of screwed either way. But let's at least move away from the Walking Dead. I think it 
may transpire that we shouldn't have done anything here and we should have just left it. With the auto resolve, because we're losing a lot of that stuff anyway. Okay, so they're wasting their time with the skeleton and the lone walking dead. That's completely fine. Um, we should be able to just weaken them now. We can pretty much outrun them, and we did a nice bit of damage there too, so that's good. Defend with you, and let's walk the skeletons back. Go fully defensive now, and I think we can pretty much win now with no more losses. Uh, assuming there aren't too many losses of morale like that. I do want to weaken these Walking Dead before I go for a shot on them. I am much faster. Let's wait. Hopefully they'll come closer. She yeah, they will, so that's fine. Um, I don't want to go for a hit on the Walking Dead yet. Let's take the skeletons out. defend with these. Let's just weaken these as much as possible. Walk these away because I'm less confident they're going to get a kill and this stack alone should be able to handle what's left. One loss. That's fine. 22 skeletons, kind of painful, but the marksmen survive which is nice and we go up to expert armor which is also good. 5,000 gold is also a nice reward and I didn't realize that you get skeletons back when you kill the undead. That's a strange one. I didn't think I'd get anything back there, so that's actually really good. And we're kind of already at a point where we've got some nice momentum going. Now we can get the city hall. I think that's the most tempting option of the bunch. And let's aim to get the estate by the end of the week. Now let's go with the city hall. And I do want to get Saurog, but it's not the biggest priority on Earth. I do wonder about taking on the pack of orcs with nothing but walking dead and just hoping for the best, but it's a silly idea, let's not do it. There's no sign of anyone else, so that's good. Uh, it's definitely very tempting to go straight for this other crypt, and I don't really see a big downside to that. I think we should do a bit more scouting. So let's go ahead, let's recruit Saurik, and we're just going to use... Huh? Him. Okay, we're just going to use him as a scout. Uh, let's leave the wolf riders on him because they are relatively fast units, so decent for a scouting hero. Let's just check this area out a bit. If we lose him, it's not the end of the world. We didn't really need the gems, although maybe we do. Thinking about it, Castle Town. If you get the resource silo in the castle town, you get extra wood and ore, which is not what you need. What you need is angels and gems. Gems buy you angels. So this could actually be a much more important hero than even Clavius. And I'm suddenly very reluctant to risk him. Let's scout with Aislinn instead. If we lose Aislinn, it's not the end of the world. We should get a new necromancer offered to us every week. And... As good as a Meteor Shower Specialist is, it's not exactly one of the best options that Necrom uh, Necropolis has. Necropolis has other heroes like Isra, who are also extremely good, nearly as good as Galthran, arguably better than Galthran in certain situations, so... Aeson's not that important, I think we can risk him. Her? Her. Okay. Uh, right. Let's start making a move on the other crypt. Shakti. Let's keep coming back with the peasants. I'm not sure it's going to be worth leaving a hero just constantly going back and forth, gathering more and more peasants. We are playing on Shadow of Death. If you're playing on the fan-made One of the Abyss expansion, then the hovel will gradually accumulate 
peasants over time, but on this version it'll only ever have one week's worth of peasants, so you would have to have a hero constantly going back and forth, either that or you do a full on hero chain, which is not going to be worth the effort. Or the hero slots. Stables is really good. Is Galthran near enough to take advantage? I think he is. I think we should probably hang around here till the start of the next week. Uh, we're not going to fight lots of vampire lords, let's not go for that one. I think we do want the stables, but we can wait to buy that till the start of next week. It's going to be more important that we have units available to us. So let's get the estate so that we have some kind of vampire production, and then next turn we're going to go for the uh, citadel, which should give us up to 10 vampires from the start of next week. We still need to find crystal though. We need crystal and then we can actually upgrade to vampire lords, which is just such busted units. And there is some crystal right there next to the infernal trogs and that should be more than enough. So potentially that's where we'll go next, but we'll keep scouting first. Let's end the turn. Hopefully no one will show up. Okay good, it's going very well. And this time we know we know where the vampires are going to spawn, if vampires are indeed going to spawn. So let's move as far away from those as possible. We're going to go 7th slot and I think 5th slot. Thinking about it, I think those are the best options. And then I think we want the skeletons in the middle. This is if they spawn with vampires, and I don't think they're going to tell us what they have until we go and fight them, which I don't remember being the case, but... That seems about right. Another option would be to go for the second slot. That should be fairly safe, yeah, let's try that. That is if they spawn with vampires, which they might not. Uh, do we want to search the graves? I don't know. We won't know otherwise, we have to just go straight in, don't we? Okay, this time it's weaker and we are only predicted to lose 5 skeletons and I don't think we need to bother fighting that one. We get 13 back straight away, so that was a completely profitable fight in every way. And we got more money to spend too, which is nice. We definitely want the Citadel. And in this town... We're a thousand away from buying the castle. I think we'll leave it though. I don't think it's it's not worth wasting most of our resources on. Plus I'd be just as tempted by the city hall, so let's not bother. Is it worth getting the Griffin Bastion? Day 7 is the best time to build something like that. Obviously we will benefit immediately from the next turn, but not really planning to buy too many Griffins in the near term. Anyway, let's keep exploring. There's another crypt there. There's also a, a free stable if we do want to keep exploring this direction, which is tempting because there is a crypt there. Horde of Skeletons too, Horde of Goblins, lots of easy necromancy victims, Horde of Pikemen likewise. Definitely going to be tempting to come in this direction. But there's pretty much no downside to... Hmm. We have enough movement points if we go for the windmill. I don't want to risk it. There's pretty much no downside to having some stables in your town. But I'm not going to buy anything this turn. We're going to keep saving the money. Bring Shakti back to Necropolis. Or in fact what we can do is we can pick those things up with Clavius instead. And we can send Shakti back to get some more. Sarag should be relatively safe. I forgot that he was even here, so obviously he's the right choice to pick up the windmill if there was anything there, which there isn't. Curse spell's not that exciting, but it looks like we can actually keep exploring in that direction, which is interesting. Now I do really want logistics on Galthran because if someone suddenly appears, say from the northeast, and takes the necropolis town, it would take many days to get back, which is not ideal. 
but they should come along the roads. Anyone who does come to attack us should come along the roads. So we might be able to catch them out along the way. Okay, new week's begun. I think we do want to stick with more marksmen and monks. Those are always going to be pretty useful. It's tempting to take on the evil eyes just so we can unlock the prison. But it's not too important. Let's get the stables, definitely. And we can buy a city hall. But we'll have to wait till next turn. We already have one in the Necropolis town, which is fair enough. Uh, we need the Necromancy Amplifier in order to get the upgraded estate, and we definitely want that either way, so let's go for it. Shakti can go and pick up some more peasants, and it occurs to me now there is actually a way through here, so let's go check that out. Let's keep scouting here as well. A spell, which we already should have once we go back to Necropolis, and oh, that's going to be really valuable. Redwood Observatory, we can see what we're up against. See if there are any more opponents in that direction, which there shouldn't be, I think. This is potentially interesting just as a shortcut to get back to the Necropolis town. We'll have to traverse some suboptimal terrain here with the lava. The lava, it's not called lava, is it? It's not called lava terrain, is it? I guess it is. We will have to traverse the lava terrain, which is not ideal. But still, potentially the fastest way back if we want to go straight back to the town. Uh, let's go pick up whatever this guy can offer us. Should have gone to the stables in hindsight, but that's fine. Flavius. Yeah, let's just send him back. Galthron has options. A horde of trogs and then go back. We'll have to fight the gogs, but that's fine. We can definitely take that now. I think what we want to do though is we want to go and clear out this crypt um, and start clearing out some of the fairly easy fights around here. Get a bit of experience from the learning stone, a bit of attack from the mercenary camp, and a bit of defense from the Mileto Tower. I'm not going to go too overboard with the castle units. I'm just going to stick with the ranged ones. And pikemen can be converted into skeletons, which is going to be even more busted. And I'm looking forward to making the best of that. But for now, let's just go for the crypt. We'll stick with our current arrangement. Let's try this thing out. Okay, it's a fairly weak one, but I want to see if we can do it without losing the marksman. No reason we should, really. We are faster because Galthrand does give all skeletons plus one speed. So... I don't really see the risk here. No reason to take any losses. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I didn't think that through, did I? Okay, fine. Sloppy mistakes happen. We can you. I'll kill you, in fact, and then kill this guy too. Didn't really think that one through, but fine. We get 19 back. 19! We lost two, even while <laughs> not really thinking things through. Okay, uh, a horde of pikemen. I do want to fight that. A horde of skeletons, and then a horde of goblins. This is going to be so many easy skeletons. But all six of the opponents are teamed up on us, and uh, we need to be a little bit, a little bit careful because once they start coming in, they're going to be coming in in very large numbers, probably all following the same path as each other. They do share the line of sight, I think, so they should. In fact, I'm sure they do. They all share the same line of sight, so in theory, they should know where I am. Which is a slight concern, and once we start seeing them, they're probably all going to show up. Let's check this out, see what we can see. As, uh, there's the way underground, which is interesting. Also some swamp terrain, which is not looking very appealing. 
pretty difficult to get into in the first place and then just really hard to traverse. So let's probably just avoid that one. Do we want to take on the Griffins too? We can definitely do it. Don't want to overstretch Galthron though. And this is undoubtedly a fight worth taking. Two skeletons lost, frankly. There's no reason to fight that one out. And we get Wisdom too, which is nice. 24 skeletons for that. It begins. We are just going to keep rolling through things here. All the skeletons there, which is going to result in even more skeletons. Let's do it. They're trying to run away. We can fight them. Three losses again. Well, you know what? Let's try and make up for some of the losses from earlier. I don't think we should need to lose anything here. Yeah, no reason to take any losses there. Easy enough. Learning Stone for a bit of XP, Bloodlust spell, not really worth getting excited about. Probably will never use it. Five gems. And some crystal, lots of crystal in fact. And that's going to be good for getting Vampire Lords, which is going to make us even stronger. Uh, castle. It's day two, so not really a priority right now. Tomb of Souls, we might as well get it. Capital is also tempting. Should be able to afford that reasonably quickly. Yeah, so there is actually some reason to get a castle now. Get that thing out of the way. Let's do some more exploring with Shakti as well. Thatched hut. I think that's... I'm not sure about that one. My head is telling me dwarves, but I'm not sure about that. I think it's Dwarves and Heroes 2. I'm not sure about Heroes 3. Spyglass. I think we have the Speculum, don't we? Very similar. Not quite right, though. Which reminds me, we do need to actually... Who has it? You have it, don't you? We do need to take the Pendant of Free Will back to the Seer. So let's go and do that now. Ah, let's go into there. We should get some movement points. Sarig's kind of running out of things to do, but that's probably an okay thing because we want to keep him pretty safe so that he can keep us buying angels. We got fairly lucky here in some ways with Shakti for some easy skeletons at the start and catching that AI out too and getting Sarig. It's all very useful. I don't think we have access to a gem mine, so Sarig could be invaluable. We do have leprechauns though, and leprechauns give you a fairly nice supply of gems. It's one of the reasons why Castle doesn't need to worry too much about not having a good resource silo. Pretty much guaranteed to have a mystical garden somewhere near your base, so... Not really a problem for them as it is for a, a faction like Fortress where you really need sulfur and you might not have any source of sulfur at all. 900 in the bank, is it worth trading a bit just so we can buy something for a thousand? I'm gonna say probably not. And Portal of Glory is just extremely expensive, so I'm not going to rush into that one. Right, let's end the turn. I think someone will show up pretty soon. Just need to be ready for them when they do. I'm not going to be all plain sailing. Halflings. Interesting. Okay. And those are going to be free skeletons too. That is interesting. And they can be used as ranged units, but we're not going to get too many of them, and it's... It's not really worth it. I think better off just converting them into skeletons. And it probably is worth it now just to have a hero constantly going back and forth to the base. Gonna be an extra 40 skeletons per week. So definitely worth pursuing. Get some more ore income too. 
Now, Clavius can potentially have a force of his own. I don't want to risk unnecessarily losing vampires just yet, though. And that's grass terrain, which, again, I'm, I'm sure there must be some castle at the end of this. We need to look out for that one. Horde of Goblins, let's take them on. Let's try and run away. We don't take any losses, we get 20 skeletons. Attack skill, crystal. Some more crystal just there, guarded by, I think those are battle dwarves. Horde of Pikemen. This is how it goes. This is how it goes, another 26 skeletons, this is how it goes. You just... <laughs> you just go around fighting things and you get stronger and stronger. It's pretty busted, but I've made it as difficult for myself as I can. So let's not jump to conclusions. We've got six more opponents left, they're going to be much tougher than the first, and they're going to show up at some point, possibly all at the same time. And we need to make sure that Galthran can comfortably take them all on, pretty much without taking any losses, because it's all about keeping the momentum we've got. If we lose a lot of those skeletons, we're back to square one. We need to be careful of that, but I think that's going to be enough for this part. So do check out the playlist link in the description where you can keep watching, uh, unless you're watching this like within the first couple of days of it being uploaded, in which case there won't be any more episodes of it yet. But otherwise, do check out the playlist link in the description. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.